Alam ko yung scientific name ng sile. Ano bang sinasasabi mo, Berte? Kasi ito, parang amoy sili siya. Mm -hmm. Umpisahan na ba? Inumpisahan ko na. Ay? Guys, ito. Ang sayang tipik name ng chili. Cap Capsicum Anum. Ayan, maalala ko pa yung klase, yung lesson natin noong college tayo, Lusing. Ano na sa mga buto-buto? Ano ba? Oo, ano? Lusing! Ay! <laughs> Pero Lusing, alam mo ba din yung scientific name ng saging? At oo naman ah, Berte, hindi pa naman ako makakalimutin. Ang scientific name ng saging ay... Ano na nga ba? Sandali, hindi ako makakalimutin. Musa say, ang scientific name. Ang banana, ang saging ay... Musa say, kabilang sa pamilya ng Mosasea. Oo, oh, oh, Mosasea. Wala mo paano i-pronounce yun. <laughs> Pero ang scientific name ng banana, hindi mo ba maalala, Lusing? Oh, sandali lang. Alam ko na. Musa. Oh, parang yung pusa ko. <laughs> si ano, si Risa TV. Bertay. Yung Musa. Oh, parang Musa. 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 Ang scientific name ng saging ay Musa Akuminata Gula. <laughs> yun na, yun. Natandang ko na. Ay, nakong hirap ng tumanda, no? Ay, ang Musa, mga kapatid. Musa Akumita Gula. Yun, Bertay. Naalala ko. Musa, naalala ko tuloy yung pusa natin, Berteng. Umuwi na tayo. Baka umiyak dun si Risa TV. Mabuhay, welcome to today's session on the reasons why English changes. Rupert Jordan here from English for Millennials. A conversational English for non-native speakers. Please uh, hit like, leave your comments, share this video with your friends, families, relatives, and students new to my channel don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell icon for the latest updates from my channel people always ask has language changed over time and there is only one possible answer to this question by quoting the words of a philosopher there is nothing permanent except change and this is according to Heraclitus a famous Greek philosopher who lived in 5th century BC a famous writer also puts in by saying language changes if it does not change like Latin it dies but it changes particularly if we are trying to manipulate uh, language specifically but we need to be aware that as our language changes, so does our theology changes. Particularly if we are trying to manipulate language for a specific purpose. And this is according to Madeleine Lingel, an American writer of fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and young adult fiction, including A Wrinkle in Time and its sequels. A wind in the door, a swiftly tilting planet, many waters, and uh, an acceptable time. Lingle emphasizes uh, that the any language, whether it's Filipino, Spanish, Arabic, or English, changes over time. She also emphasizes dead language. Let me clarify to you something about dead language before sharing about the importance of English language. Latin is dead language. Why is it considered as such? You know, Latin is essentially died out with the fall of the 500-year-old Roman Empire in 476 AD. But do you exactly know the status of this language in reality? It has gone through a process of transformation. It had only transformed first into a simplified version of itself called 
vulgar Latin or sermo vulgaris, which is also called colloquial Latin or common Romans, and then gradually transform into Romance languages. Romance languages are Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Romanian. Latin is the mother of these languages. Thus, classical Latin fell out of use because of its transformation. It is a dead language, but not extinct. What is the difference between dead and extinct? We say dead language, uh, it means scholars, pastors, or priests may still read or speak uh, a dead language even they don't speak it natively by learning it from childhood. A language that uh, has no longer any speakers, especially if the language has no living descendants and it is called dead. Whereas um, extinct language, it means nobody knows how to read or speak the language possibly because uh, there are no surviving manuscripts and no record of it for example the Kamai Agta is an extinct uh, Aita language of northern Philippines Katabangan or Katanawan Aita is also an extinct Aita language that was spoken in Bontok Peninsula of Quezon Province, southern Luzon Philippines. For your information, as of 2000, a total of roughly 7,000 natively spoken languages existed worldwide. Most of these are minor languages in danger of extension. One estimate published in 2004 expected that some 90% of the currently spoken languages will have become extinct by 2050. This is according to a language researcher, David Gradle, the man who saw the future of English and other languages. Going back to the issue, is language really changing and why? And we know already the answer It's yes. Yes, it is. In fact, every other human language, not only English, changes. Language is always changing its linguistic components, lexicon, phonetic and phonology, spelling, semantic and syntactic. Language is evolving and adapting to the needs of its users. So whether we like it or not, we have to admit the fact. The English words we are using at the moment may no longer be in use after several decades and centuries. Some of us may be pessimistic about this uh, reality, but don't worry, this isn't a bad thing. As far as change in language is concerned, it always brings us something good. Thus, we should be grateful for language development. Can you imagine if English hasn't changed since 1950? we wouldn't have the information age, also known as the computer age, digital age, or new media age. Digital age is always considered as a very historical period that began in the mid-20th century, and it's characterized by a rapid epochal or epochal shift from the traditional industry established by the Industrial Revolution to an economy primarily based upon information technology. Without the new media age, we wouldn't have English words on information technology to refer to. I purely wonder why English changes over time. Think about the following situations. Please support and subscribe to the following channels I'm going to highlight.
Lucy Pagalan, Pinay Check, and Jura Boom Booms can now instantly send Super Chat. After activating this monetization of features on their YouTube channels, so we have a super chat, YouTube. Situation number two, without a router or router, it is not possible for Bradford with tens of Mbps megabytes per second to communicate Lucia and Vanessa aka Spaniolang Hilao, working miles away from home. For your information, Madrid is a Spanish province so, uh, with the fastest average mobile download speed of uh, 37.20 mbps megabytes per second followed by Valladolid, uh, Sevilla, Zaragoza, and Malaga. This is according to the latest uh, this is according to the latest survey. Situation number three, Irene Caballo aka Karin TV cannot instantly send Alden's copy of birth certificate to Raymond without the fax machine. So we have fax machine. Situation number four. Farah Darlene, Shauna, aka It's Me Chong, can enjoy watching Paxman flight because of the cable TV connection. So we have cable TV. Situation number five, Arlene Mendez in Canada, Filipina wife in USA and Virgo girl can clearly film the routines and interest because they use high-tech ring light commonly described as glamour or beauty light. So we have ring light for vlogging. Situation number six, it is impossible for Arceli aka ATV channel to regularly chat with Joy Sartillo, Helen Herrero in Netherlands, and Risa TV without the internet with 87.9 megabytes per second in Malaysia. So we have internet. Situation number seven, Brad TVB regularly holds an online Sunday fellowship via YouTube with a Wi-Fi or wireless uh, fidelity provided by Saudi telecom company and it's possible for Melinda A 
the Yan and Shan adventure, and tune at KNC to chat with him live. So we have live chat. We have also Wi-Fi online. Situation number eight, the Huangs can immediately send a two-minute video to Tana Gonzalez and Happy Tamir Filipina via Bluetooth using the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So we have Bluetooth, Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Situation number nine, Ati Ami, aka Ati Ami 09 channel, Life in Journey. Genevieve Baskog and Ara Gassi can hardly video call. But thanks be to God, using the Facebook Messenger on their smartphones, they can communicate one another every day. And situation number 10, the premier moderator, Haji Wardia, aka Kitten Lover Visha, finds it more convenient to give us uh, viewers the hyperlink of new members and super chatters. Thus, uh, she is very thankful to Allah for the Web 2.0. So we have hyperlink, Web 2.0, super chat. Thus, Web 2.0 hyperlink, smartphone, Samsung, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, internet, cable TV, fax machine, router, super chat, and so on are just words created for the convenience of us language users. As long as the needs of language users continue to change, so will the language. The change is so slow that from ear to ear, we hardly notice it except we crumble every day so often about uh, non-standard English being used by the young generations. However, if we are to read uh, William Shakespeare's uh, writings, for example, The Merchants of Venice uh, and Romeo and Juliet from the 16th century can be very difficult for us. And if we go back a couple more centuries, uh, Jeffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales uh, are very tough sledding. And if we went back another 500 years to try to read Beowulf, it would be like reading a different language. Thus, we need an in-depth study of the Middle and Old English forms before we can fully understand their linguistic structures or components. What are the reasons why language change? First, English language uh, changes because of the needs of the speakers also change. The field of science and technology never stops inventing, discovering, recreating new technologies and new products. And new experience require new words to refer to them clearly and efficiently. Consider the word texting. The SMS concept was first developed by Franco-German GSM Cooperation in 1984 by Friedhelm Hillebrand and Bernard Hillebert. But the first text message was sent years later on the 3rd of December 1992 from Neil Papworth a British software architect and former developer at SEMA Group Telecoms. 
Originally, it was called text messaging because it allowed one person to send another text rather than voice message by phone. As the word text messaging um, became more common to us, we began using the shorter form text to refer to both the message and the process or the act of texting. For example, Jen Warai has just got a text from Jen Ryan's. So, Jen Warai is texting back Jen Ryan's right now. Text. So, we have text, texting, texted. Another reason for change is that no two people have exactly the same language experience. We all know a slightly different set of words and constructions depending on our age, job, education level, region of the country, and so on. Via social media such as Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, or YouTube, we pick up new words and phrases from all the different people we talk. And this combined to make something new and unlike any other person's a particular way of speaking. At the same time, various groups in society use language as a way of marking their group identity showing who is in and who is isn't a member of the group just like the following jesus although not yet formally accepted uh, but in the long run they will be accepted officially jordanetics for my followers lucination for the followers of lucy pagalan uh, BLDG theme for the followers of BLDG. Uh, Amis Angels, Karing Central, Team Tulungan, uh, ATB Ayuda. Many of the changes that occur in language begin with teens or teenager, young adults. As young people interact with the uh, others at uh, their own age, uh, their language grows to include words phrases and constructions that are different from those of the older generations. Some have a short lifespan but the others stick around to affect the language as a whole. Here are some of the words created and popularized by young people. Vlogger for a person blogging through video instead of writing. Hashtag is used on social media for describing the general subject of a tweet or other post or message. To go viral when something is popular and spread quickly, we can say it has gone viral. When a real virus spread through people or computer, it's a bad thing. However, when a piece of social media content uh, goes viral, it's usually positive. Dark web to refer to the dark side of the internet. Nomophobia, fear of worry at the idea of being without your phone or unable to use it. Child free to refer to people who choose not to have children. We get new words from many different places due to migration and globalization or globalization. We borrow them from other languages. For example, we have uh, adobo, the national dish of the Philippines. Kuya, a Filipino word for elder brother. Kimchi, a spicy, sour Korean dish made of vegetable that have been allowed to ferment. Sushi is the traditional Japanese dish of uh, prepared vinegar rice. Chutzpah is the quality of uh, audacity for good or bad. It derives from Hebrew words uh, chutzpah, meaning insolence, uh, cheek, or audacity. Lasagna is a type of wide uh, flat pasta, possibly one of the oldest types of Italian pasta. We get words from other languages for scientific information. Scientific names uh, in Latin and a few in Greek are very informative. 
because every recognized species on earth from uh, five kingdoms of protista fungi or fungi plantae animalia and monera is given scientific name this system is called binomial nomenclature where each species is assigned a two-part name for this reason the system is known as a binomial nomenclature the first part of the scientific name is the genus and it's always uh, capitalized the plural of uh, this word is genera and the second part of uh, the species is uh, and the second part of uh, the scientific name is uh, the species um, epithet epithet uh, the descriptive name or title and the entire name is written in italics and the entire name is written in italics or underlined for example the chili papers that has um, for example the chili papers that then uh, challenge the life of uh, BLDG it has scientific name capsicum anum or capsicum anum in uh, the original Latin pronunciation by the way there are two pronunciation of the scientific names the anglicized form or the anglicized pronunciation air if you can stick to the original Latin pronunciation the cultivated banana that has challenged um, Lucia is called the Musa Acuminata Kula because these cultivated bananas was first described by the Italian botanist Luigi Aloysius Kula so sometimes so we attach the uh, Kula to Musa Acuminata. So we have Musa Acuminata Kula. These names are important and officially used and adapted in English because they allow people throughout the world to communicate ambiguously about the animal species using this system. So in this system or binomial nomenclature, the names are based in the universal language latin latin was considered a universal language you are learned you are considered learned people if you know about latin so it means you are somebody and considered learned person if you know latin and uh, latin is regarded as the language of education
I'm going, going, going crazy.